Welcome to Drumard Farm, episode 15, with me, Mr. Sealy P. So, time is getting on, it's quarter to ten. I am 99% compacted. I used the telehandler only because it's quite a wide bunker silo, so what I was doing, I had it on full lock, and I was just kind of spinning round and round. Uh, it was a lot easier than going backwards and forwards. I'm not at a stage yet with the farm where I've got any heavy tractors or heavy equipment to make this any easier. But there we go, we are compacted 100%. We've got 853,714 litres. So we'll get this off now. jump out and we'll blanket silo so got another job that needs doing which I need to whiz over and do and I'll explain when I get over there I'm just going to park this up back in the barn and then in the morning we'll have some work to do because the other thing I've realized as well I haven't cleaned this out I don't think nope that needs doing too what we do with getting a bucket for the telehandler actually that way I haven't got to worry about always having the, uh, the front loader over here right let's pop that up that'll be another purchase I need to do okay right so we're going up to Drummard Arable wow stars look amazing So I had purchased the root crop storage building which was I'd positioned here and I was given some very good advice. Uh, Mr Corsa um, that the storage here is absolutely phenomenal and it can take um, pretty much everything in the silos so I didn't actually need to buy it. The problem is I spent 90000 on it and I've just sold it and only made 45000 back so I've lost 45000 But mm, one of those things, can't really think about it. Um, it was corroborated moments later by a golf cart jockey who said that they, yeah, exactly the same thing. These silos here will take pretty much anything. So, that being said, what I did was load up the uh, the trailer with all the potatoes I had um, and put them in here. Um, I, t I, d I didn't need that other... All the deliberations I spent on the last episode, bouncing backwards and forwards, shall I do it, shan't I do it, just didn't need to do it. It was a complete and total waste of time. So... We now have the bunker silo covered, that's going to ferment overnight. I've put all the potatoes into storage and it does mean that I'm going to need to get a potato um, seeder because I'm going to plough the field up the top here on the farm. I don't know, I might do it overnight, I'm not too sure. And get potatoes back in the ground over here. I do, I'm going to put this trailer, oh this is leased isn't it, I need to get rid of this. This needs to go back over to the store. Um, because I've got fields 27 and 28 I think it is let's have a quick look no nope, sorry 28 and 29 are both ready to harvest as you can see field 24 has had its last uh, bit of squirt with the fertiliser that's good to go but what I have also done off screen let's just quickly go to growth I have ploughed this out as you can see between growth and soil composition that's what the uh, field used to look like and ploughed I've ploughed it out now that bit's a funny shape there because there's a big clump of trees here which at some point I might well uh, cut down but for the time being that's a bit bigger which gives me a few more options um, and where are we looking up here 
this is also good to go I just need to leave that to grow now so yes yeah, field 9 here I'm thinking of ploughing out I'm sticking potatoes in here but all of that will wait until the morning now because it's too dark to do anything so I shall see you in the morning it is just before six o'clock in the morning and a lot has happened overnight uh, a lot of the fields are ready to harvest now <coughs> bunker silo is working nicely 28 and 29 are both ready to harvest i need to do those today four five six seven eight is ready as is field 24 so it's gonna be a busy old day field 32 and field 33 need some work on them but everything's going really well there's gonna be a lot to do on the farm when i say today i mean over like the the course of the day um but a lot of them were okay with regard to fertilizing these two definitely are going to need some work doing and field nine i'm going to be plowing out at some point so um yeah on this episode lots to do uh, the animals aren't looking too bad. I didn't know if I needed to feed them, although the cleanliness of the cows is looking a little bit ropey. I need to get in there and give them a bit of a clean out, I think. That's probably the best bet. First job will be to do that. I don't need to be in the telehandler to do that. I thought I was going to have to make up some feed and that kind of thing, but I don't need to worry about that at the moment. I'm just going to clean them out. The feed's not on red, so it's not going to be too much of a problem um, if I just go and grab the uh, the bucket and give them a bit of a clean out I do need to sort out something more permanent um, for a sort of cleaning solution the more I get in here um, I did think about getting one of the Lely Junos but the problem is it, if you need to go in there to put feed in it's in the way so I might just get another one of the pickup conveyor belts that I've used before or just keep coming in with a bucket and doing that way. I don't know. I'm, I'm, you know, trying to think of different ways of doing it that I haven't done before. I do like the fact this barn hasn't got all the bits on the right-hand side uh, like it did on the old stream farm. It's the same style of barn, but you couldn't pick everything up because of all the things up down the side. So using one of the pickup uh, conveyor belts means that you can get everything up. Um, but this is nice. It's a nice clean area you can actually see in it. So, uh, right, put that in, give them feed, and that'll be the animals, or the, not the animals, the cows clean anyway. Um, I do need to buy some more and uh, mm. increase the herd, considering I want this to be a dairy farm. And just pop it down here become the home for the front loader attachment. Perfect. It's not far to go, but this is quite a ponderous beast. Is it 14 miles an hour? Takes a little while to get anywhere. And we'll see how we get on getting this header off the header trailer.
slope, we'll disconnect the header trailer and see if we can't get this header off of the trailer without it getting stuck. Hopefully we should be okay. Fingers crossed. Okay, that was alright. I was fearing the worst for a minute there. Right, I'm going to do the first few bits myself, only because I ploughed this, this left hand side of the field out myself. So it's not straight obviously, so I'm going to do a couple of strips up and down myself just to get myself my straight edge that I usually do. So I can get the kind of the rectangle the worker can work at and then let the worker carry on. And I can then sort out, um, bring the trailer over, and cracking on with this harvest. The yield's not as high as I thought it was going to be. Considering I ploughed it and fertilised it and did everything I was supposed to, but yeah, I'll make do with what I've got. So I'll set a worker and off he goes. Time to get a trailer. While the harvester is getting on with its work, I've decided the load of wood chips I've got I'm going to put into storage because the price just hasn't bounced back. It's just sitting um, so because. The bunker silos here at Dramard are awesome. I'm going to uh, put this into storage. I've been told it works with wood chips. Let's give it a go. It does work with wood chips. That's amazing. Fantastic. So, yeah, as you can see, they're both below a thousand. If I'm going to if I'm going to sell a lot of wood chips, I want it to be up around a thousand. So I'm making a nice bit of money on it. Um, silage is still dropping. It's all a bit of a worry. I'm trying to decide what to do as well about um, what trailer to get. I don't want to go too big on this. That's one that obviously one the tractors can pull. I didn't go too big on this one either. Um, it's not a big map, there's not a lot of room. I've used a lot of the larger trailers on other maps. But the problem is if you're hauling larger loads to and from, you don't want to be going backwards and forwards constantly, but, you know, I'm having a look. I'm thinking maybe the smaller Joskin, maybe the Bandit 750. Harvester's doing a great job. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I've just driven straight past the uh, the forestry area. That was brilliant. I will cut back through here. It was brought to my attention that uh, on my guide to wood chipping, your wood chipping options, I failed to mention on the wood chipping. Um, guide to that the um, Gens BA725D this one here 
has a 5,000 litre storage capacity. I know I've mentioned it a lot on my Let's Plays, uh, but I completely forgot to mention it whilst doing that video. I apologise for that. If you didn't know that, it has. And you might see... No. Have I not found it in there? That's strange. I thought I would have. There we go. There was some in storage. Okay. <coughs> yeah, so it stores 5,000. The other thing I I was puzzled with was I mentioned the fact that my daughter, when she plays this, um, her um, conveyor belt sits like this. Then as soon as you put a log on, it starts operating. And I couldn't work out for the life of me. I couldn't get any setting to work uh, where it would do that. And I was given some more advice. So thank you very much, gentlemen, for... Um, making me more aware of my surroundings and how I wasn't really paying attention <laughs> which I have done quite a lot recently um, if we go into our settings the reason it wasn't working was because I have my automatic engine start off which means I have to start the engine myself manually so I was so I go in like so and let's just put the settings on if I go R1 it says start engine so when I start the engine it's on then I have to manually turn on the wood crusher like so fantastic turn off the wood crusher stop engine now if I go into my settings and I turn that off or on if that makes any sense automatic, automatic engine start is on which means now that automatically as soon as you get a log and you throw it on there it will automatically start the engine on will go the conveyor belt and it will start working so that's why it wasn't working for me was because of my settings I have auto engine start off and if you want this to run automatically you put that to on that's it uh, it was as simple as that something I'd completely overlooked um, but there you go just covering a couple of issues that were uh, not issues, but things that were brought up that I'd failed to mention, things that I wasn't sure of, and like I've said numerous times before, this is a all of it's a learning curve. There are going to be things that I do a certain way and always have done and haven't thought of doing it another way, and other people will comment and say, "Have you thought about this?" And sometimes I just haven't. Um, some things I just don't know. I've never done them before, and people will give me advice. But there you go, a uh, few little extra add-on bits there. I need to get back over to the harvester, really, and get a trailer. So, uh, where am I going to? Over to the farm. Now, luckily for me, it stopped to the right side. That makes a change, that doesn't normally happen. I'm just thinking, whatever I'm going to get for this field, selling all this, um, this probably going to be just enough to replace the trailer <laughs> which is a bit uh, <laughs> a bit frustrating but I suppose that's the nature of farming isn't it you make just about enough profit to get by and if you need to replace equipment you either end up leasing it or buying it but it's not going to leave me with a lot of money but that's one of those things ok he's off again so I'll leave this just to the side. I'm going to leave the cultivating of this field until I've altered it because I'm going to plough out between the two fields. So um, I'm not going to start, normally I would start the cultivator rolling in behind. Um, but I'm not going to do that just yet. What I am going to do, however, is grab the JCB, um, which had the plough on the back of it, because I was ploughing out field 33 at the top of the hill. I'm going to take it over to field 9 behind the farm, where I have every intention of putting potatoes in. Now, I have also thought about, because I want to try and make this farm kind of a bit more realistic, in, not realistic in so much as, you know, everything I do farming-wise is going to be the most realistic ever, but a bit more kind of realistic as a farm. Um, I might try and make it a little bit more kind of sustainable or self-sustainable so I'm thinking on one of these fields I haven't decided which one yet work out which one gets the most sun and put in maybe a couple of um, 
solar panels on. Maybe one, maybe a couple at some point. So the farm can generate its own power, maybe. Um, just to change things up a little bit. Where do I need to go? Actually, probably better if I go straight through the yard. So this is the farm I kind of decided I was going to do potatoes in. It's not a bad sized field, actually. And I've just got to work out which are going to be my edges I'm going to leave and which I'm not. So here goes nothing. Plows in the ground. Um, I'm going to leave the strip at the top and the strip at the bottom, I think. because I'm going to need room to get in at the top of the field with equipment. It's probably not going to make it the biggest potato field you've ever seen, but it will do the job. What we'll need to do is get in here probably with the Scorpion King and cut some of these trees back to give myself as much room as I possibly can. better. Now I can see through the gloom. So I'm going to give myself my boundary first, I think. And I'll worry about everything else afterwards. I could probably go a lot further over towards the hedge, which again I might well do. Let's see how we go. Actually, it's a bigger field than I thought. But there are quite a lot of trees in it, so I might need to get rid of these. Just mopping out up the last bit. I'm actually quite surprised how low the yield has been on this field. Considering we ploughed it, we made it a little bit bigger and all the rest of it. I know the yield on canola, um, or seed grape, has always been kind of lower anyway because the price is always quite good for it so the yield was always a little bit lower but I don't know, it just seems a bit unusual I think I'm only going to be about 19,000 maybe 20,000 litres in total so the whole concept of buying a bigger trailer probably actually isn't needed at the moment so a bit odd yeah, I don't know the other thing I've just noticed and it again, this is probably one of those things it was like it the whole time let me just turn that off. When I bought the fence and the fence headers, I don't remember it having this big Ziegler bit on the front. I just thought it was the fence green. I just came, I came over to unload it and suddenly thought, there's all this red stuff on the front. Maybe it was always like that. I don't know. I just don't remember that before. Yeah. Hmm. don't know. Maybe it was part of an update, mod update. I don't know. You're probably going to watch this and go, what's he talking about? When he bought it, it was like that. It's, you know, he's an idiot. Um, yeah, don't know. Or maybe when I close the, close the harvester up. Does that go away? No, it doesn't. I just don't remember that being there. When I took that off the header trailer. Hmm, don't know. Anyway, just, just me, you know. Same as usual. Right, let's put the... Uh, Actually, I do need to open it out to get it to lean back so I can get the header back on the trailer. Yeah, because when I did the episode of making sure you're showing how to get this onto the trailer, I don't remember there being that bit sticking out. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. Tell me. It just seems very boxy and I don't remember it being there, so... Hmm... Right, I need to go and get the other header now, because I've got to do sunflowers, so I need to go and get the corn header, which I'll whiz over and get now, and I also need to sell that. A couple of jobs to do. As you can see, the ploughing's going on nicely on field nine. That's going to be one of those jobs that I'm going to fit in <coughs> around everything else that's going on the farm, so I'll do a little bit every now and again until I've got a a fully functioning field. I 
The yield on this will be low, it's only a small little field and didn't get all the work done on it that needed. But again, it's a means to an end. I bought the field with the sunflowers in it, so what I will do, I don't know how well the workers can get on, but I'll set a worker on this. That way I can take the uh, Fent tractor and we'll go and sell what we got off the other field. Great demand for barley. Let's have a look. 726. Yeah, it's, uh, <coughs> it's a little bit higher than it has been, but nothing awesome. Uh, what are we looking at then? Canola, oilseed rape. Drumard sale area one is definitely paying most. So we're going to go this side for a change. Wow. Exciting times. Let's see what we get. Wasn't expecting it to pour out of the grain door, but there we go. Forty thousand. Okay, that's brought the money up a little bit. The potatoes I'm keeping in storage, predominantly because um, I will use those to reseed potato fields. So I'm not going to be selling them. But looking up here, I'm just trying to see what else I've got. I have still got some uh, some things in storage. Actually, I've got quite a few things in storage, haven't I? Because of what I'm thinking of doing, <coughs> I, I can sell everything, um, which I might well do. Apart from the potatoes, obviously, potatoes I'm going to keep, but everything else, if that price is quite good for barley, I might just sell the barley. Got some soybean, but got a soybean harvest needs to get done. Sunflowers I'm selling at the moment, but the price isn't. Fantastic on those. Okay, well, a few options. Let's get back over to where he's actually harvesting the sunflowers. Okay, so that's field 29 done. We'll fold up this header. It's not a huge amount in here. This may well need to go into storage solely because I need to wait for a better price. Because the price is pretty poor at the moment. So anything that goes into storage is not going into storage for pig feed or anything like that. It will just be in storage waiting a better price. Now, I've brought the JCB over with the plough. Field 9 is, like I said, it's going to be one of those fields I'm going to do a little bit every now and again until the field's ready. Um, this is the field I said as well, like I did with 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm going to plough this out. So 28, 29 will be one large field. Um, so this whole centre section that we're in now will disappear. I'm going to widen it a little bit all the way down that side and there, just to give us a much bigger field to use. That is the plan. So I'm going to start on that in a moment. Just need to get these out of the way. And that field needs ploughing anyway, because I bought that and it hadn't been ploughed. So a fair bit of ploughing work needs doing. And what I am going to do, I think, is uh, leave the tracks to bring back the header trailer. That's probably the, the best thing, I think, all round. So, more ploughing. 
uh, I'm going to plough this all out now. Actually, I might. So what if I plough the whole thing out? This can definitely come a little bit wider, I suppose. Drop the plough down. I've allowed it to create fields, which is what it needs. No, I haven't. I thought I had. How weird's that? That's better. I thought it was weird. Should have been working. I should not have backed up with the plough in the ground. Okay, so. Ploughing right across, the whole lot's going to go. This can become a little bit wider too. So you don't really need the space down the side of the field, that's not too much of a problem. The bottom I'm leaving where it is and how it is, because I need that runoff space, I need that for turning ploughs and cultivators and cedars and all that kind of stuff. So that's going to stay as it is. Not do anything to that. I could come a little bit wider up this side, maybe. But I'm really making it big enough that I shouldn't need to worry. No, that's brilliant. Managed to set a worker rather than what I needed to do. That's better. Okay, so that's that corner. Hopefully done. Now we're going to go right to the top of field 28 and come right the way down the side, widening the whole thing out. So this whole section here in the middle will get ploughed out. Put all that space down the side there. Does mean I'm going to lose the track, but I don't. I don't need it once the field's done and it's a bigger field. It won't need to be there. So. That's not too much of a problem. Question is, how much of this am I going to lose? Probably to about there. If I can try and keep that distance all the way down, which it, it will fluctuate because I can never drive in a straight line. If I can try and keep that kind of gap to the hedge and follow that all the way down this is going to make this whole field considerably larger or two fields I have just finished fertilising field 2829 which is now one field it's ploughed, it's fertilised this side will need cultivating that side has now been planned planned ploughed but we do have one field where once there were two i have gone a little bit further over this side as well just to give myself a bit more room in the field but there we go field 28 29 is combined the next harvest is going to be soybean the prices have started to creep up again soybeans on the rise at sale area one um, and sale area one wood chips is on the rise silage unfortunately is still falling but that's one of those things um, so I've got a bit a bit to sell all over the place really um, which I will do a little bit of off screen I'm going to take this back to the yard now and refill it but that is the end of this episode um, we've done a canola OSR harvest on 28 we've done sunflowers on 29 we've started ploughing out field 9 ready for potatoes we've checked on the animals made sure they're all right um, start of a new day on the farm it's 8:31. lots to do in this day on the farm uh, still need to work on these fields here as well decide what I'm going to plant in those and the silage is at about 80, 89% I think it said now. So not long till the silage will be ready. But that is it for this episode. If you like the episode, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please.
please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share the video, please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do, thanks for watching.